was cracking big dogs. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is BDGE. Big dogs gotta eat. And draft time is here, bro. I got my first draft in two days. In two days, my first actual draft. This is the moment we've been preparing for. There's a saying I like to use that I put into the, the BDGE Bible every year. My big strategy right up in the draft guide on BDGE.store. You can hand a man a marg and get him drunk. Or you could teach him how to make a marg and he will stay buzzed forever, right? That's like teaching you how to be better at fantasy football. Today, we're saying fuck it. We're not teaching you how to be better at fantasy football. I'm telling you my favorite single targets in all 16 rounds of fantasy football drafts this year. We're going to do two players per round. We're going to do one running back and we're going to do one wide receiver per round. My favorite targets at each position at each round. That's it. And if you get a nice mix of these players, if your roster is comprised of these skill players, you know, mix and match, we do a couple squares here, a couple circles here, and we just blend them all together, you'll have yourself a nice cocktail. Your team will be well-rounded. You'll have some upside. You'll have some floor. You have all the breakout candidates that you could possibly fucking handle on one team. Okay? Today, technically, 32 must-draft players. It's not even possible because you only have 16 rounds. But y'all get the point. All right? Next up, subscribe to the channel if you're new. Tuck your fucking shirt in. Stop yelling. Let's eat. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into a resource that I like to use for ADP, average draft position for all you fucking novices out there. I'm just kidding. I know there's a lot of people that come in and are doing the research for the first time like today or tomorrow or whatever, which is why you should subscribe to the channel because we're going to be helping you out throughout the entire year, bringing home the motherfucking hardware. Let's go. We're going to go into screen share. This is my favorite resource for ADP, and it really hurts my self-esteem, my ego, when I have to minimize myself because I know you guys care more about the charts than me. Let me get my socials out of the way. Make sure you're following me on the socials at Nick Ercolano on Instagram, on Twitter. So I will link this resource for you guys in the description. If you want to go check out the ADPs, it's on 4for4.com, completely free to use. What this uh, resource does is it compiles the ADP from Underdog, CBS, ESPN, FFPC, Best Ball 10s, NFL.com, and Yahoo. So you have a mix of three paid platforms, Underdog, FFPC, and BB10s, and four free platforms, CBS, ESPN, NFL, Yahoo. And these are uploaded and updated daily. So what I like to do is take the average of all of these, and that's what the ADP on the left side over here is. It is the average of all of these eight platforms. Probably 0.0005% of you guys are going to Vegas for a high stake league. And then 0.005% of you guys are in like a free league with six year olds. So I think uh, the mixture of terrible ADP and ADP that's way too sharp doesn't help anybody. But when you, when you average them out, we probably get the most realistic view of what fantasy football drafts are going to be like this year. So with that being said, we're going to go round by round. And based off this average ADP, and listen, I know some of the guys I talk about in certain rounds aren't going to be available. You're like, there's no way that guy goes in there. Like, shut, the, shut your mouth. I'm just trying to cater to as many people as humanly possible. So what we're going to do, let's go round by round. And we're actually going to start in round two. Okay. So I just already started out with a lie. So, you know, I'm probably just going to be lying the entire video, but I figure there's no point of doing a must draft player in round one because you don't get your pickup players in round one, depending on where your draft spot is. So we're going to start in round two. And these are the players going in round two. You can see picks 15 through 24. These are the most likely candidates to be available for you. And this is one quarterback ADP. Of course, I actually don't have, I'm surprised they haven't been pulling in sleeper ADP to get some two quarterback super flex love out there, but they don't. So we're going to stick to one quarterback because that's the majority of leagues right now. And I'm looking at the second round, my favorite two players are right next to each other. It's Calvin Ridley, it's Najee Harris. And I've talked in depth about both of these guys in videos this week. So if you've missed my must-own wide receivers, my must-own running backs, where I go really, really far in depth, which I probably won't be doing too much of in this video. I just want to get the names rattled off for you guys. Calvin Ridley with Julio Jones out, he has been an absolute monster. He's one of the best route runners in the league. I think there is a, a decent chance that he finishes as the overall wide receiver one this year year. He is a beast over the middle. He's a beast downfield, and he's basically the only target there outside of a rookie tight end. Najee Harris has seen every single snap for this offense in the preseason with the first team. This guy's volume is going to be, it's going to break your fucking TV. That's how high this volume is going to be for Najee Harris in Pittsburgh. We know Mike Tomlin will feed and feed and feed his featured workload running back. Don't be scared about him being a rookie. The only other concern is the offensive line, but he's going to catch a ton of passes. He's a great pass catcher. Uh, he has some breakaway speed. He He's going to be one of the best second round running back picks in fantasy football this year, 
hands down. So my two favorite guys in round two, Najee Harris, Calvin Ridley. When we move down to round three, starting at pick 25, I have two guys. I have at running back, J.K. Dobbins. I love J.K. Dobbins this year. I'm getting higher and higher and higher on him as he keeps dropping down the draft board. He's pick 31 right now, so at like the 307. I just don't want to think too hard about this. We know he's one of the most efficient running backs in the entire NFL. He's in an offense that is going to run the ball more than anyone in the entire NFL. They showed already that they'll use him on the goal line. Gus Edwards is a little thicker than him, but it don't fucking matter because they know J.K. Dobbins is really, really good getting the ball in the end zone. Is it a problem that he doesn't catch passes? It might be, but I think he I think he's going to end up scoring between 10 and 13 rushing touchdowns this year. That'll more than make up for it. We remember Mark Ingram being a top 10 fantasy running back in 2019 when he was touching the ball like 14 times a game and caught 26 passes. So J.K. Dobbins, I absolutely love you can get him as your RB2. At the wide receiver position, I like both Keenan Allen and CeeDee Lamb. So I would, I would uh, mix it up between the two. If you are sitting there and you have two different drafts and you can go two different wide receivers in round three, I love Keenan Allen because his pace with Justin Herbert last year was unbelievable. So if you take out week one where Tyra Taylor was the quarterback, you take out the last week of the season where Keenan Allen left because of a hamstring injury or whatever, his pace was legitimately 180 targets. I think Keenan Allen has a chance to catch 140 to 100. That's ridiculous. I think he has a chance to catch probably 100 and. 10 to 115 passes this year in an offense that's up and coming in an offense that's going to be explosive in an offense that's going to give him more scoring opportunities because Hunter Henry's also gone, but because the offense is going to be really fucking good, that's why they're going to have more scoring opportunities. So I love Keenan Allen. Uh, I also like CeeDee Lamb. I just, it's hard not to get on the train now. He's such a fun player to watch. I'm not going to lie. Maybe uh, Hard Knocks is giving me a little bit of a chub for Mr. CeeDee Lamb. He looks so good. The offense is going to be explosive. I lean Keenan Allen because I don't know what's going on with Dak right now, but if there's going to be a breakout candidate from the second year group to go big time, it's it's for sure CeeDee Lamb. So those are my favorite players from round three. Let's move down to round fo 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 fo, starting at pick 37. There's only two running backs in this round. It's Chris Carson and Miles Sanders, and I will definitely be taking Carson over Sanders. They're already showing us that they want to use a committee in Philly. Uh, they're talking about their running backs coach, their offensive coordinator, is talking about using different players in different situations. Boston Scott's going to get touches. Kenneth Gainwell's going to get touches. Jordan Howard and uh, Jordan Howard. Did Jordan Howard get cut or carry on or Jordan Howard? One of them one of them bigger backs got cut, but the other one will take some work as well. I don't know. I just, I just, I'm so far off Miles Sanders this year after the heartbreak he gave me last year. Uh, but Chris Carson just seems like such a safe play. If you can get him in the fourth round as your RB2 or even your fucking flex, you are golden because this dude is the starter. He was on pace for 60 targets last year. Had he not gotten hurt, he's got underrated receiving ability. And he's just a workhorse in, in Seattle. There's no one else to be nervous about there in Seattle at the running back position because Rashad Penny's knee is like 75 years old. If you got a test, Chris Carson, my favorite running back in that round wide receiver. There's a lot of good options, a lot of good options. You got Cooper, but he's early. So I don't want to label him a must draft there. Got Chris Godwin, Tyler Lockett. I like Cooper cup the most. I think in this Rams offense with Stafford, they're going to be high flying. He's going to see a ton of volume. And without Cam Akers, when they're inside the red zone, when they're inside the 10 zone, I think that goes back to being a super pass heavy offense down by pay dirt. And Cooper Cup's a guy who just averages a shitload of end zone targets every single year. And I think Stafford's shown us that he likes to throw to the slot. I think Cooper Cup is going to be stupid involved in this offense. So I love Cooper Cup at pick 46 there. Let's move down to round fizzy five. Round five. So the running backs available here, you got Travis Etienne, who I am not in on at all this year in round five. You have Mike Davis at the end of the round. I like Terrell Henderson here. I don't think Terrell Henderson will be available to most of you guys in round five, but if he is, you hit that button. If he's available at the end of round four, I'm still in on him. Again, like I really like this offense. They're going to have a lot of scoring opportunities. Terrell Henderson is the guy. They're not playing him at all in preseason because they know he's the guy. They don't want to take a chance of him getting hurt after Cam Akers is obviously out for the year. So Darrell Henderson is going to have a big workload. He's an explosive playmaker. Not as good as Cam Akers, but he will be he will be fine for fantasy. He will be a, a, a mid-range RB2 with a bunch of weeks that he sprinkles in his RB1 week. So I really like Darrell Henderson in the fourth and fifth round. Wide receiver. Ah, I love Brandon Ayuk. I love, I love, I love him. Uh, fifth round's a little bit pricey when you have a guy like Deontay Johnson sitting there on the board, in my humble ass opinion. That's never incorrect. I just I just love Deontay Johnson. I think he's one of the best pure route runners in the NFL, if not low-key the best. He's not. Okay, fuck you guys. But he's really, really good. Listen, you don't just luck your way into 140 targets at the wide receiver position. There's a reason he got that last year is because he's all he does is separate. Yes, he could he could use some uh he could use some sticky glue on his hands, but 
Drops are not predictive. Drops are not predictive of fantasy points or year over year drop percentages. So I'm all back. I'm back in on, on Deontay Johnson. One thing I will say, I talked about Najee Harris and Deontay Johnson. I typically will split the difference. If I get one of the guys, I won't draft the other guy. I don't stack on offenses unless I know that that offense is going to be fucking awesome. Right, like I have confidence that the Rams' offense is going to be really good, so I'm fine taking Cup and Darrell Henderson. I'm not. Po- I-, I think Pittsburgh will be fine, but I don't want to chance it. So if this offense goes down the tank, there's a good chance Najee Harris or Deontay Johnson don't return value. So I tend to stay away and, and you know throw a fucking dart at one of the guys as opposed to both of the guys if I'm not positive that the offense is going to be very very good. So round five we have Darrell Henderson, we have Deontay Johnston. Round six. Now this is going to be kind of contrary to what I've been talking about all summer, but Chase Edmonds is my favorite running back in round six. And I actually am starting to like James Robinson a lot more. I think he's going to get a shitload of goal line carries there, and I think he's going to get a lot of early down work as well. But give me Chase Edmonds, who actually has real workhorse upside there. I think Chase Edmonds really has... I'm starting to come around to the fact that you know, given what we've seen in Arizona in their preseason games, given what we've heard all summer, given what we haven't seen out of fucking James Conner, I'm pretty confident that Chase Edmonds is going to see, you know, at least 15 touches a game. And a lot of those are going to be by way of receiving, right? Like he was a top five back in terms of targets at the running back position last year. So he's never had a big workload, but you add Rodney Hudson, you add Rondell Moore, and like this offense is going to be spread out. This offense is going to be explosive. They're not going to be able to key in on Chase Edmonds ever. Not that a fucking defense ever would, but it won't, it won't happen. It won't be able to, okay? They have too many weapons on that offense for anything to be difficult to run through. Uh, and that offensive line should have a lot of holes because of Kyler Murray there. So I really, I'm starting to like Chase Edmonds more and more in the sixth round as the RB26. I think he's going to have a shitload of passing down work. He might not get the goal line carries. I'd be surprised if he did, but I think he'll be more than fine for you if you're in a half PPR, full PPR league. So I like round six, Chase Edmonds a lot. And then at the wide receiver position, you can go one of two ways here. They're 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 bike to bike. Chase Claypool, T Higgins, wide receiver 25, 26. I would say Claypool probably has a little more upside, but again, I'm not stacking Pittsburgh wide receivers there. I also think there's a big, a better chance to chase Clay, Claypool busts because they have they have Juju and they have Deontay Johnson. And his touchdown numbers were just insane last year on the limited volume that he got. I don't know. I feel safer with T. Higgins. What what do you guys feel there? I feel like uh, that's probably a split decision that a lot of you guys are might be struggling with right now. If I'm in a draft and I'm I'm, I'm taking one of these two sophomore wide receivers, it's Higgins over Claypool for me. I think Higgins just fucking got jiggy last year, man. I feel really confident that he's a really solid receiver. Maybe not the upside, but the floor is pretty sexy there for T Higgy Higgy. So I like Higgs in the sixth round. In the seventh round, I hate every single one of these running backs. Are there even any running backs? Raheem Mostert. Yeah, it's literally the only running back in this round is Raheem Mostert at pick 77. So we'll double up on wide receivers here. And that will be some combination of Jerry Judy. There's a lot of wide receivers in this round that I like, but the ones I would be targeting are Jerry Judy one. Uh, I really like Devontae Smith, Tyler Boyd, and Debo Samuel. But where's Debo Samuel? Did I lie? No, he's the last pick of this round. Jerry Judy would be my number one. I think Teddy Bridgewater wins that job. If not, I I think they've shown good chemistry, both quarterbacks with Jerry Judy. I think Cortland Sutton is one year off from being the guy there as the alpha because of the ACL tear. We like him two years removed, not one year removed, people. Jerry Judy is the guy this year in Denver. He's going to ball out, unbelievable route runner. They're going to throw the ball out there. I'm all in on Jerry Judy. I love Devontae Smith as well. As Jalen Rager falls further and further behind, man, I am really, really in on Devontae Smith just becoming the alpha there, right? Like we we might have been worried that like, okay, is Devontae Smith really the alpha there? What if Jalen Rager actually breaks out in year two? Now it's like Quez Watkins. They've got nothing on Devontae Smith. So I really, really like Devontae Smith. We'll split the difference there. Tyler Boyd, that's fine. If you take T. Higgins, I'm not doubling down on this passing offense because I'm worried about Joe Burrow. And then Debo, I want pieces of the San Francisco offense. So if I can't get Ayuk, I'll take Debo a round or two later. That is fine with me no spicy takes there but 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 talking about spicy if we're talking about spice here's the thing i'm not good with spicy food if i start eating spicy food i start crying i literally like my pores bubble up and uh it's not a good look for me which is why this testimonial is so fucking strong truff hot sauce i don't know if you guys have ever heard of truff hot sauce I'm like a new, a semi-new fan of it. I heard about it like last year through Big Dog's own Mike. But Truff Hot Sauce is fucking brilliant. This is by far and away the best hot sauce I've ever had. For someone who does not like hot food or hot sauce, I put this shit on everything, right? I don't know how that's, uh, what was that, Mike's? Whatever bullshit-ass hot sauce it was using that slogan. This should be Truff's slogan. Their, just their packaging, I feel like, is worth purchasing. Look at you. You guys can see yourselves. How you doing? 
How you doing? How you been? Truff hot sauce. Incredible hot sauce. You have hot sauce that's infused with truffle. That's why it's so good. That's why it's fucking brilliant. You have ooh, black truffle infused, white truffle infused, and for you freaks out there, they've got the hotter sauce. And they've got a whole variety of products, which is wh why I think Truff is dope because they're like expanding out of, outside of just hot sauce. Like they have pasta sauce. So if you're someone that likes a little bit of spice on it, as you could see, I've tried it out before. I don't make pasta that often, but when I do, I start to use this on it and it's fucking incredible. Black truffle pasta sauce you put on your shit. They have chipotle mayo. They have spicy mayo, all truffle infused. This stuff is incredible. Game day is coming up. Draft night is coming up. If you want to fucking show out and flex on your fucking boys during draft night, provide them with the beautiful hot sauce pack, okay? They got bundles. They got packages. And because your boy loves truff, they're giving you a discount. They're giving you a code BDGE for 15% off your purchase on truff, okay? The link to their website will be right down below, truff.com, 15% off your entire purchase with code BDGE. You'll not be disappointed. This is by far and away the best hot sauce I have ever had coming from someone who don't even like hot sauce. Put it on your wings. Put it on your pizza. Put it on your motherfucking pancakes for all I care. It makes everything taste better. I love Truff, and I guarantee you, you will too. Truff.com, promo code BDGE for 15% off. Spicy shit only. Let's get back to the spicier takes. Round eight. I've talked at nauseum about these two running backs. In round eight, we have Damian Harris and Trey Sermon. A la, I, I would assume in most drafts, one of those guys is going to go in round seven. So you know what? Instead of doubling up in round seven, if you want to take one of those running backs, I would lean Damian Harris first, then Trey Sermon second, because we know for sure Damian Harris is the starter there in New England behind a very good offensive line. Trey Sermon going to be in a committee with Raheem Moser. I think he overtakes that starting job, but there's a chance that it doesn't happen, right? It's all range of outcomes. It's all different spectrums here when you're looking at fantasy football Damian Harris then Trey Sermon both of those guys my favorite running backs down here at this point in the draft wide receiver you guys know who I'm looking at no you don't because he's not on the fucking board yeah he is okay Antonio Brown how many times I got to talk about this dude before you guys start moving his ADP up you could see on underdog his ADP is the highest up there because we work with underdog and I won't stop talking about Antonio Brown all the way up at pick 70. But in every other format, every other platform, 99, 101, 83, 90, it's, dis it's disgusting. It's disrespectful to Antonio Brown, who still got it. He comes in to Tampa Bay week nine last year and leads the wide receivers in targets. He ties Mike, Mike Evans with 62 targets from weeks nine through 17. The same target share as Mike Evans, more targets than Chris Godwin, more receptions than both of those guys. Top 12 in fantasy points per route run. Antonio Brown is back. He's fucking bike. And don't be surprised when he balls out this year. And the value that he gives you compared to the other two Tampa Bay wide receivers is massive. Do not draft Evans. Do not draft Chris Godwin. You're drafting Antonio Brown in round eight and round nine at wide receiver. It's the sexiest pick in this draft. As we move down to round, uh, round nine, I believe starts at pick 97 or some shit. Okay. At this point, like at this point, you should have your starting running backs is what I'll say. You should not be banking on round nine, 10 and 11 running backs to be in your lineup or being your flex spots in this round. There's AJ Dillon and there's Zach Moss. We're not looking at Ronald Jones. We're not looking at James Conner. I like Zach Moss over to AJ Dillon. If you're looking for someone that you can throw into your lineup immediately, if you drafted Aaron Jones in the first round, if you're going to use a, you know the fifth, sixth, seventh overall pick on Aaron Jones, you should be using a ninth, 10th, 11th round pick on AJ Dillon. Okay. I really, really think that's a smart thing to do because if, if Aaron Jones gets hurt, you are going to be fucking shoving the needle in your arm. Okay. I didn't want to say kicking yourself in the ass. I wanted to make something up here that's on brand on spice, spicy shit over here, all right? You're going to be injecting some shit into your arm if you had Aaron Jones, he gets hurt, and you didn't have A.J. Dillon biking him up there, okay? So let's go Zach Moss 1, A.J. Dillon behind him if you want to go with A.J. Dillon based on drafting Aaron Jones first. Wide receivers, there's a couple ones that I like in this round. Uh, I would go Jarvis Landry. He's my favorite pick here out of the wide receivers. Jarvis Landry, listen, he gives you 11 to 12 half PPR fantasy points per game every single season, four straight years. The only reason he, he was at like 10 last year, only because they had those three hurricane games where Baker Mayfield completed like eight passes per game. If you take those numbers out of the split, and if you look at all of his other games, Jarvis Landry averaging his normal 12 to 13 half PPR fantasy points per game. Getting him in the 10th or not, uh, 10th, 11th round as a flex play 
easy fucking points right there. I like Michael Gallup for a little bit more upside because if something happens to Cooper or CeeDee Lamb, I need a drink. I've been ripping off for about four, 30 straight minutes. If you're new to the channel, if you're new to the channel, I really just go off like this every single day. So make sure you subscribe, okay? Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you're not hating the video thus far. And make sure you fucking check check out Truff, please. Go check out Truff. Steve, what do you want from me? What are you texting me in the mail? You, know you know I'm working. You know I'm filming. Don't be texting me about cash shit I owe you. I don't owe you shit. You owe me shit. I owe him a fuckload of money. Let's go. Let's go. Michael Gallup, a lot of upside there. Dallas offense should throw the ball about a zillion times a game. I would take Jarvis Landry over Michael Gallup, but I like Michael Gallup as a upside play there. If you want to pivot from wide receiver and look at the tight ends, I think this is also a good spot. Ninth, 10th round to start looking at your tight end one if you faded the position altogether because you have guys like Higby, Irv Smith, Mike Kosicki, all fine down here. If you want to just grab a starter, that's a low end tight end one that'll get you six, seven, eight, nine points per game. Let's move on to round 10. Round 10, we are looking at running backs by the likes of Kenyon Drake, David Johnson, uh, Gus Edwards. Gus Edwards, definitely my favorite play here. I think Gus Edwards is a standalone value if you draft J.K. Dobbins or if you don't draft J.K. Dobbins. We've seen in the preseason, they're going to get a split. There's a reason they resigned him. Gus Edwards has been low-key one of the most efficient running backs since he's entered the league. There have been three running backs ever to start their careers with over 135 carries per season and averaging over five yards per carry on those carries. It is Nick Chubb, Clinton Portis, and Gus Edwards. You know I'm in my fucking bag. You know I'm in my zone. You know I've done an insane amount of fantasy research when I can just rip off stats like that after not looking at anything for 30 minutes. I'm just ripping off absurd Gus Edwards career stats right now for you. Nick Chubb, Clinton Portis, and Gus Edwards, the only running backs in their first three years of existence to average over five yards per carry and see over 135 carries in each of those first three years seasons. Gus Edwards going to get some goal line carries. Gus Edwards going to get a lot of carries overall. He is a decent flex play that'll get you a touchdown every other week probably. So I like Gus down here as far as wide receivers go. Uh, I kind of like a lot of the wide receivers in this round. We have Jalen Waddle for upside. We have Mike Williams and Marvin Jones for big plays and explosiveness. I think Waddle probably has the most upside here. He's the most intriguing to me. If you're just looking for players, I'll get you eight to 10 points per game. Jones and Williams should do the trick. I like Jones a bit more. I think he has an actual chance of leading his team in like targets and fantasy points where that's not going to happen for Mike Williams with Keenan Allen and Austin Eckler both there. So I lean Marvin Jones probably, but I, I think I would take Jalen Waddle over both of those guys on the chance that Tua actually breaks out. I think Jalen Waddle will be the biggest recipient of that breakout. So we move to round 11. If we're looking at running backs, all the running backs in this area absolutely stink. So we'll go Tony Pollard if you have Zeke. If you took Zeke, draft Tony Pollard here. Otherwise, double down on tight ends. Like if you took Tyler Higby, I would probably draft like a Jonu Smith or something here too. Wide receiver, man. Corey Davis has been looking damn good this preseason. He's the most boring pick ever, but I think we need to start coming around to the fact that Corey Davis is going to see a shitload of volume. Listen to this stat. Corey Davis has seen 50% of the pass attempts from Zach Wilson this offseason. In the preseason game so far, Corey Davis is a full-time player, obviously. They signed him to be the number one. They gave him a nice contract. Elijah Moore has been out, but Corey Davis has absolutely bald. Corey Davis, 50% of the targets from Zach Wilson's fingertips so far this summer. Corey Davis is going to be a, a nice volume play that I think we need to wrap our minds around the fact that he's probably going to be a wide receiver three in fantasy. As we move down to round 12, I fucking hate every single running back in this round. I'm not taking any of them. So you guys can't force me to do it. My favorite wide receiver in this range uh, is uh, they're starting to throw defenses and shitty tight ends and stuff. By process of elimination, we'll go Russell Gage here because Russell Gage had a Russell Gage saw 110 targets last year, which was 22nd amongst wide receivers. 22nd among all wide receivers, wide receiver two type volume. Uh, and now Julio Jones is gone. So Russell Gage could match those target numbers again and be top 25 in targets. I don't think he's great. I don't think he's explosive. He's a slot guy. So his A dot and his yards per reception are not going to be high. But in PPR leagues, Russell Gage is pretty interesting in the in round 12. We'll move down to round 13. And there aren't a lot of running backs left here that you want. My favorite running back here would be JD McKissick. I've talked about how I really like JD McKissick. He's not Theo Riddick. He's not James White. He was a wide receiver coming out of college. He was a guy who literally led all NFL running backs in targets last year. He saw he caught like 90 passes, 80 passes, 70 passes in multiple college seasons. He is a very good pass catcher. And we've seen this preseason already that JD McKissick is playing on every third down. Sucks for Antonio Gibson, but McKissick is still very much going to be the third down guy in Washington. It's unfortunate, but it's not unfortunate for people that draft JD McKissick in PPR leagues. Wide receiver, I like Emmanuel Sanders here a lot. It depends on his injury status. I know he came up banged up something with the foot or ankle recently. 
I love him as the wide receiver too in one of the highest scoring offenses, in one of the most pass heavy offenses. I think Emmanuel Sanders is low key going to be such a good fantasy pick this year, all the way down at round 13, round 14. Uh, round 14, you know, I fucking went off about Jacoby Myers in the must own video yesterday. So uh, he's my obvious pick here. He won't be available to you in round 14 of most drafts unless you're in a very nonchalant friends and family draft. So Jacoby Myers, round 14. You love to see it. I also like Sterling Shepard here. Jacoby Myers probably go like around 10, around 11. Sterling Shepard here, I think, will be a really nice volume play. I think he's been one of Daniel Jones's favorite, if not his top target, like year in and year out. I really don't see that changing. I, I obviously, Kenny Galladay's here to be the one on the outside, but I think Daniel Jones is going to dump off to Sterling Shepard a lot. And we're going to see a lot of, you know, what we've normally seen five for 60 games, a touchdown every third game at a, at a Shepard. So, best ball league, Sterling Shepard's an easy smash in round 14. Running backs, man, listen, Gio Bernard, Gio Bernard's going to end up catching 60 passes this year from Tom Brady. I'm pretty confident in that after seeing their preseason games. Gio's a pass catching back. He's going to play a lot. Brady's going to end up loving this dude. Uh, he's like a better version of James White. So, Gio. Makes sense down here in the 14th, 15th round if you're in PPR leagues. Uh, as we move down the draft board, some other guys I would take shots in the dark at if you're just looking for late round sleepers. I'm a big fan of Elijah Moore, even though he hasn't been playing. He should be back for the opening of the season. I think Zach Wilson's looked a lot better than people are giving him credit for. So I think Elijah Moore is going to obviously benefit from that. Uh, I love Brian Edwards out in Las Vegas. Terrace Marshall out in Carolina. Not too sneaky anymore. Marquez Calloway in New Orleans. Ty Johnson in Detroit, in uh, New York. So damn, I have way too many Jets on this fucking list. You know what? Probably ignore my ass. Josh Palmer out in uh, LA for the Chargers. I don't even hate Marquez Valdez-Scantling. I think he's the, the bona fide number two out there in Green Bay. And then Salvin Ahmed, the backup running back for Miami. Those are the guys I like all the way down here as sleeper picks. Uh, as far as tight ends, you know, I kind of talked about guys I would target later on, but Robert Tunyon is the guy y'all want to own in every single motherfucking draft. So that is the must draft players I have for all 16 rounds, running back, wide receivers, 32 players altogether. Uh, we have in-depth breakdowns of all of our must draft players in the draft guide right now on bdge.store. We've got our must draft list. We've got our all fade list. We've got our rankings, top 200 in PPR, standard, half PPR, super flex, one quarterback leagues. We've literally got everything you need for your fantasy draft. If you're just starting research right now, that's up on bdge.store. There's also our memberships available on that website that will give you my in-season weekly ranking so you don't even have to fucking fret about no sit starts we got you covered that's the only place that you can get them through the membership on bdge.store make sure y'all subscribe to the channel if you're new i don't even think tony had to fucking edit this video i just went 30 minutes off the top i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing if i need to see a fucking neurologist right now but what i need to do is make some fucking dinner because it's 5 30 and i haven't eaten yet and i need to make some fucking pasta with this beautiful truff sauce truff.com Use promo code BDGE for 15% off. I'll see you on tomorrow's video as long as you subscribe. I love you. I'm out.